Okay, well, I'm going to start over because I had a really big camera malfunction because I didn't... Anyhow, big camera malfunction, sorry, and I don't have any editing software, so it's not like I can edit that crap out. So I'm going to start over. Um, so I'm going to answer a few of the uh, Ask Me Anything questions that people ask me about. Um, so I'm going to do the easy ones first. Um, Gian Andrea asked me, what's your favorite shoes designer? I think about, you know, the shoes that I actually wear and, you know, buy and get aboard. Um, I wear a lot of uh, Calvin Klein, uh, BCBG. Um, I like Carlos Santana shoes. Carlos Santana shoes are cute. Um, and Jessica Simpson has some good shoes. She does a lot of knockoffs of high-end stuff, though, so, um, you know, if there's some high-end shoe you can pretty much, that's popular, you can pretty much figure she's going to copy it. Um, but I like high heels. I like... I hate flats. Um, of course, I've got a pair of flats sitting right down here. But these are Calvin Klein flats. They're kind of comfy. But um, they have the stretchy back, and that makes a big difference for me because flats that have the rigid back, they really dig into my heels, and they, uh, they uh, give me blisters and hurt my feet a lot. So with a high heel shoe, you know, your foot sits kind of forward so that it doesn't rub against the back of the shoe. So that makes a big difference to me. Um, I just like high heels anyway. But if I think about shoes that I, you know, aspire to own, because, uh, you know, we all can have shoe dreams. Um, you know, I really think that, um, you know, of course, Manolo Lani makes beautiful shoes. Jimmy Choo makes beautiful shoes. But I prefer Christian Louis Kings to pretty much anything. And my friend Gretchen and I are planning um, what I've come to call uh, Lala Shalooza, where we're going to... Um, take a little, have a little weekend in the city, and we're both going to buy a pair of Christians. So I already have mine picked out. I'm pretty sure what I want. Um, but they're just beautifully sculpted shoes and um, just just plain gorgeous. So that's my favorite. Uh, Donna says, what's your favorite thing to read offline? I love reading. I read a lot. Um, I have a giant stack, a stack of books right here. So a little bit of everything right there. There's my two TED book club books that just came. Really interested in uh, this one right here. Um, True enough, learning to live in a post-fact society. And then of course David Sedaris, right there. Although I prefer to listen to David Sedaris, but I read them too. Um, over here I've got a big stack of poetry anthologies. You know, and. Uh, a really funny book of essays. David Foster Wallace says a supposedly fun thing I'll never do again. I like essays because you can just pick them up and kind of, kind of start anywhere. Um, getting away from already pretty much being away from it all, which is a really funny essay. I like him a lot. Um, but I like I like science reading. I really like. Uh, there's an author, John McPhee, that Joe introduced me to. Who writes a lot of a lot writes a lot about geology, but about a lot of other stuff too. Um, I like reading about the brain and about people and how they interact. And uh, I like reading. I kind of like biographies. It depends on the person. I like not self-help books, but things that are self-development focused. Um, and I've got music choice on right now. And Rick Astley, never going to give me up, is never going to give you up, is on. And, oh, so, like, my TV is rip-rolling me right now. Um, I really like, um, and fiction that's kind of science-based, so, you know, anything that's, like, forensic-based. I don't watch all those TV shows like CSI and everything, but I love me some Patricia Cornwell. So, you know, I like that kind of stuff. I'm looking back at my bookshelves back here. That's mostly Joe's stuff back there. But anyhow, um, and I also like to read magazines. Um, I love my, my computer sitting on a giant stack of magazines right now. Um... Everything from, you know, Vogue and Lucky to Scientific American. I love that stuff. Let's see. Tim Jackson said, who's your favorite unpublished Southern poet? Well, me. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, you're right up there with him. Um, but, you know, you know, you and me are like the only unpublished Southern poets that I really know. Um, and by the way, where's our poetry blog update? We need some more poems. Don't make us wait. So let's see. Um, Matt asked boxers or briefs. He says, no, I don't have a question really, but boxers. Boxers, I will say. Um, let's see what else we got here. St 
Devo FC says, why do you have a sudden obsession with vlogging? That's a good question. I don't know. I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, it's kind of crazy. And I don't even like the sound of my own voice, so why am I doing this? But I really enjoy vlogging. Um, it's really a self-development, personal growth kind of thing, you know, exploring what I feel like making public, what I don't feel like making pub public, and kind of pushing myself. Um, if you're familiar with the Johari window, there's four quadrants, and one is the, um, the open, which is what I know about me and what you know about me. And one of them is the hidden, and that's what I know about me that I keep hidden. Um, so part of, you know, the, the goal of self-development, if you look at Johari Window, is to get that open quadrant bigger and bigger and bigger so that there's less that, um, there's less I'm hiding, there's less that I'm hiding for myself. Because uh, there's a, the um, blind quadrant, which is things that you can see and observe in me that I don't see or that I deny. So it's kind of like getting feedback about those things and then un and self-disclosing about the things that I keep hidden. So blogging is a big part of that. And then, you know, I just thought I would experiment um, with with video blogging. And you know, experimenting with new behaviors I think is an important step in growing and figuring out what you can do and can't do. So, so I'm kind of doing that. And it really is addictive. Addictive. I know why people do this. Uh, Steve F C says, "Do you ever film yourself doing other things?" And, ha, huh, funny question. Um, it's too serious. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to save the more serious ones for later. Laura from Pitcher Designs says, what do you get out of clerking? I get, you know, a lot of amusement and connection. I'm really enjoying meeting new people. Um, I'm really connecting, you know, social media is kind of a hobby for me. I don't do social media the way a lot of people do. But I've been, you know, I felt very much a part of kind of the social media cohort in Plurk. Um You know, I get a lot of stimulation. I get a lot of ideas. I get to, um, I get to contribute my thinking. I get to laugh a whole lot. I've made some really, really good friends, um, really dear friends and dear connections, um, really quickly. And I think part of it is because of the immediacy of it, and part of it is because of the approach I take to Plurk, which is really you know, pushing how much I can put myself out there. Um, you know, I on the Myers-Briggs, I last time I took it, I tested E for extrovert, but just barely. I'm really, really borderline. So, and I think part of that is because I'm really pushing myself to be more open, So, and I'm finding ways to be energized by other people. So I'm, I'm leaning over that edge of the fence a little bit more. But really and truly, I'm an I. I've got a lot of introvert tendencies, um, so I crave my alone time. But I am. Um, but social media is a real, or social networking is really a way to, um, for me to experiment with that extrovert side of myself, and, and you know, see how I can put myself out there, and see what happens, and see what energy I can draw back from people, and can I, um, can I, can I recharge in that way? So it's been really fun. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Deb says we should do a makeup riff on the song lists in uh, High Fidelity. So I'm not quite sure how to do that, but we need to talk about that idea because I certainly like to talk about makeup. So um, so anyhow, I just thought I'd do a couple of quick questions. Um, my friend Chris just left, and we had a lovely brunch and talked and caught up, and he had a really fun date. It's not really a date, but he met a guy last night, and we were talking about that, and ate some yummy tomatoes and goat cheese, and had some drinks, and I'm just not really buzzed, but um, I'm just in a good mood, and I'm happy, and just waiting for my guys to get back from Pennsylvania, which they won't be back till Wednesday, and I miss them, but, um, so I just want to answer some questions, and I'll answer some more later, but now I'm going to go um, to Target. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.